Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and Dev Nursery and all that good stuff. And what I want to do is actually spin up a plain vanilla JavaScript like DOM thing with uh, Vitae. Okay, so let me just get that out of the way. And um, basically using their plain vanilla project. So I'm going to do an npm init. And again, Vite or Vitae is a new bundler. So it's like Webpack, Parcel, Rollup, Snowpack. But it's super fast, coming like the big new thing. Um, and it's kind of cool, it is very fast. So if I do npm init Vitae, and the reason it's fast is because like Snowpack and Vitae, they both take advantage of ES build and ES modules, which means that like when you use Webpack, Rollup, or Parcel, when they bundle your code and they rebuild your bundle, they're taking all of your code and repackaging it into this one sort of bundle of JavaScript. Um, while Vitae and Snowpack, they're going to take the different files you have and then just take those and make them to a corresponding module file. So in that case, each of the files that you have have a mirroring file in the bundle. So whenever you make a change to that file, the only thing that has to be updated is that file, um, typically. So in that case, that minimizes the time it takes to sort of re-update and hot reload your website. Okay, so we're just gonna call this like, what I wanna do is just do some web component stuff. So I'm gonna do a, a vanilla, just, just vanilla, okay. So here we go. Did it make it? Uh, let me refresh. Oh, I know what I did. I made it in the wrong folder. So here it is. Let me just move that folder up here. Move. Good. There we go. Let me go CD into that folder. CD up a folder. CD to web component. NPM install. And let's just see here. We want to run the dev site, so let's do npm run dev. Again, we can always look in package.json to see what are the different um, deals. Okay, so there's the site as it stands. What I want to do is just create a web component, so just a native web component. So let's just see how they do this. So the way they're doing this is they are basically using query selector, and they're just changing the HTML of the app component, which is cool, that's fine. They can do that. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a folder called web components or just called components. And then in this file, oh, I want to make a new file. Well, I made this a folder. Let's just try that again. So new folder components in this file, we're going to make a counter component counter.js and we're just going to do a standard web component. Okay, so class counter extends HTML element. And if you haven't made web components before, I highly rec recommend watching my uh, web components masterclass where I kind of go into all the syntax you're gonna see me do right now. So then we'll have a constructor and then we have to call super on the constructor and now we can start setting things up. Okay, now the way I usually like to do this is we'll give this a render function and their render function um, will have basically what I'm going to do. So it's going to have access to state. So we're going to pass state to the render function. And then all I really want to do is just return uh, some HTML. So I'm going to use backticks, very similar to how you saw there in our main.js. And I'm going to return an h1, and I'm going to interpolate what I anticipate will be the counter which will be a variable called this.counter. Again, we haven't set all this up yet. And then we're gonna have a button. And this button is just gonna have a onClick event. Um, let me think about that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We, actually, what I'm going to do just leave that like that. Okay. And we just say add one. Okay. We're going to have a post render function for 
adding the event listener, but we'll come back to that. Okay. So in this component, I want to create a shadow DOM. So it just be this dot attach shadow mode open. Okay, so that we have a shadow DOM. And essentially what I'd want to do is do this. Um, then we would render. Okay. And that would render would be like, well, first we have to create state. So I'm going to say state. So this dot state equals counter zero. Okay. So yes, this looks a lot like a React class component. That's kind of the intention. Um, this dot render. Well, actually, we're just going to, yeah, call this dot render. And then we're going to call it, pass in this dot state. And then we're going to call this dot post render. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a build function. So this way I don't have to write all this logic all the time. So here's what I do I write a build function. And then this does calls this dot render and passes it this dot state. And it's going to call this dot post render and pass it this dot state. Okay, cool. Um, that works for me. And then I also want a set state function. Set state. So anytime we we pass in a new state, it's also going to just do the build again. Build. This dot build. Okay, and then also update the state. So this dot state if new state does not equal the old state because we don't want to render if we're just passing in the same thing, then Then equal the new state, then um, we're going to say this dot state equals new state. And then you run the build. And actually, we only want to build if the state has changed. So we'll just put that all in an if statement. OK, cool. And then after render, so after that gets rendered, and Essentially, what the render should be doing, saying, actually, it won't even return anything. We'll just say this dot. Actually, no. I want to keep it that way. In this build, what we we'll do is say this dot render. So we're going to say this dot shadow root dot inner HTML equals the result of this dot render. And then this dot post render will run. And yeah, okay, so now we're almost there. So what I want to do is grab that button. So I'm going to say this dot shadow root dot query selector. I want to grab the button. And then at that point, I'm going to add an event listener and say, hey, when you click on the button, uh, this dot set state, we're going to update the state. And now it's going to be count equals, um, actually, am I passing the state to post render? I am. So let me receive the state. So we'll just say equals state dot count plus one. Okay, cool. That is the component. Now I register the component. So custom elements dot define. We will call this uh, the counter. And whenever we use the, the counter, it's going to point to this counter class. There we go. So now I should be able to make it accessible by just importing this. So importing um, dot slash component slash counter. Good. And now in the HTML file, I should just be able to use it. 
So I'm just going to put it right under that first div and just say the counter. And well, it shows up, but this is undefined. So let's see why. Okay, this dot counter. Oh, okay, let me just change this to state dot counter since I'm passing in the state anyways. There we go. And then we hit add one. Oh, oh, that didn't quite do it either. Okay. So let's see here. State. So let's like run through the logic. Okay, so we would change this object to a new object where count equals state dot count plus one. So that object we could pass as the new state, which should be a different object. So then this dot state equals the new state. And then build runs again. And this dot shadow root post render. Hmm. Refresh. Starts at zero. Then it becomes undefined. Why? Well, let's check this out. Let's console log this possibility. console.log state.count plus one this should just parentheses should be here there we go let's see here let's open up the console so we can see what gets console logged Nan. Now, why is that? So let's console log just state dot count undefined. So what am I passing in there? Post render is receiving this dot state, which this dot state should start out as counter plus one. Hmm. see that this render function works the very first time hmm. what I can do is I can do this I can do document dot query selector I can grab the counter there's only one and then check what the state of that is Oh, that's right. It's Ooh, no, there's no such thing as douchement. Yes, that, that would make <laughs> sense. Uh, document counter zero. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So now build. Oh, I know why, because th this is the bind this is a binding issue. That's right. That's right. Now, now it's all come back to me. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um. Hmm. So if I do this, the post render can get the element. So pass this is the second thing. And then we can make this like element. Um, wherever where I say I say element. Dot set state. Uh, I think that's still. I'm missing something. This dot shadow root dot query selector button. 
and the button is get in the event. Let's console log the state at the time. So it is getting the state, the state dot count. Oh, but it's counter. Oh my god. That was the problem? Okay, well not quite, but state dot count. Oh, because it's state dot counter here too. Ah. There we go. Oh my god. See that's what happens when you <laughs> your brain you call something counter when your brain's thinking count. That's what happened there. But yeah, see, you can do web components. Okay, like that's that's the thing we can do. Okay, right here in this, in 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 using a bundler. Okay, just that's that was the point. That was the point. So there you can see that you don't have to like shy away from bundlers to use web components or native web components. Uh, my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.